Hey there, I'm back again with more product design videos and design conversations. And in this video, I'm happy to share my chat with Danielle Castro. Uh, Danielle is a good friend of mine, as well as a mentor that I've been picking his brain for years and asking him all uh, questions when he gets to design and design leadership and design thinking. Uh, Daniel uh, was the senior director of product design at Xbeam most recently. He helped the company to scale their product design team as well as had a, an integral role um, in uh, building the company's future uh, specifically related to machine learning and AI. Um, his most recent endeavor is founding his own um, company and application called Persona X, which is I'm really excited to share about as well in this video. And uh, please stay tuned when we have follow up uh, videos and conversation and chats with him. And of course, more videos on product design, UX design and design thinking specifically. So excited to share more very soon. Please enjoy and we'll see you soon. All right. Hi, Daniel. How are you? Thank you so much for giving me some of your time today. I really appreciate your time with your busy schedule. Um, usually, if you let me or allow me to jump in. I yeah. just ask about your, if you can share with me some of your um, background, your start in UX, how did you get into UX and uh, where your career have taken you so far? That would be great. Very cool. Well, thank you for, uh, for inviting me. It's uh, always great to, to talk shop and uh, in terms of where I came from, that is a long story, but let's try to start it up. Um, so I've been in tech for over 20 years now. Um, you know, since the dot-com era, I came into tech uh, through, uh, I taught myself how to code. And um, and in that transition, I started moving towards front-end development, even though back then, you know, all these sort of transitions of technology have kind of led me to where I'm at now, which yeah. is uh, front-end development started becoming a thing, UI, you know, software, they called it uh, UI engineer at the time. And then um, I started going to art school in San Francisco, and then those worlds collided. And then I started really getting into the psychology um, of, of the usability aspects of it. And it still wasn't UX. Yeah. Um, but uh, from there, I've you know, uh, transitioned into UX, but through information architecture. So my first role was uh, official role the transition from engineering into into design was at Verizon as a as an information architect and then the world started you know really kind of converging into UX and from there um, I really started focusing a lot on the uh, interaction design aspects of it and have always jumped between b2b to you know b2c and startups yeah. to large enterprises got to work with large companies like verizon sephora uh walmart uh global e-commerce and um and a lot of you know in between also gaming cybersecurity, e-commerce you know so just kind of had my always kind of been able to you know have my hands a little bit on on everything and 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 learn and also see I think one of the biggest things that has really helped me out is to see the commonalities between all these things. Like what, what yeah. are the common themes? Doesn't really matter what, even though they might feel uh, different, like different, they are different types of products, but from a, you know, product design standpoint, there's uh, this common theme around there. So um, totally. since then, I think, I guess UX officially probably been a little over maybe 15 years, something like that. Yeah. Um, my last, my last, uh, uh, job was, uh, position was as a senior director of product design and, and research, uh, UX research at a company called Exabeam and cybersecurity was there for four and a half years, was able to help them scale, um, the design team, mature, mature UX, uh, and for four and a half years, we were able to, you know, uh, per, make a pretty big impact on the culture of, of the company from a design standpoint. Previous to that, uh, similar similar uh, challenge, which was there was no UX department. So I went in there with a VP of UX, which uh, shortly after left, and then I assumed the position of, of directing the, the team. 
and we were able to scale it uh, at Sumo Logic um, Enterprise Company. And, um, you know, they handle DevOps and cybersecurity. So a lot of complex type of design and, uh, and you know, led it all the way to we were ready for an IPO and um, seeing the, the different stages going from early, early stage all the way to late stage and sort of the challenges of, you know, this hyper speed that is the startup world. Um, so those were the last uh, two, I guess that's probably around nine years in total of, of dedicated yeah. time uh, in that front. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Um, especially scaling team part, like I would like to maybe ask you a question related to that. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, we are in a difficult time when it gets to UX design and tech yeah. and what is happening, layoffs. Um, so I'd love to pick your brain about, for example, if a junior designer or someone who's trying to get to UX design at the moment, like what would your advice be for them? Um, and maybe the second part of the question will be for a design leader who is having a difficult time right now, um, scaling or starting a team or maybe a one person mm -hmm. team. Um, what would they do to kind of um, succeed and, and I guess survive um, yeah. the times we're in? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. I, I, I think the answer is the same for both, actually, which is um, we tend to be very, so UX in general, we're all about the user, right? So it's about empathy. Yeah. We have a lot of empathy for the user. Sometimes that empathy um, is, it, you know, with the with the right intention, but it gets in the way. And what I mean by that is that our only focus, our, our sole focus, is is the user, and it we we don't have empathy internally. So yeah. we also need to have our you know empathy for uh, for the organization and the people that we're working with. Yeah. Uh, that creating that balance is very important. So at the end of the day, what it what matters is what is the current um, view of design in the organization? Mm -hmm. And what's that expectation of me, you know, of what they're expecting? Whether you like it or not mm -hmm. is a different point, right? Currently, it, the yeah. main thing is, what is it that they, what's their perception? What is their expectations? Just like a user, right? A user expects something and you either exceed yeah. it or, or you, you know, you miss the mark. There's no difference here is the ability to be able to to understand what the expectation is and then you can have a discussion around how to move the needle or how to shift culture but what tends yeah. to happen is that the conversation becomes a little bit more about the frustration and the preaching and the you know like getting this organization just to get it and all that kind of stuff and and i think that gets in the way so for both, it's really, what is the expectation? Mm -hmm. What are the pain points of the organization? How does yep. design fit into it? And how do I connect those two together? And once you can do that, then you can start having a conversation around how to start shifting towards what you believe is the direction that we should be making. So yeah. um, that's, the, that's the starting point. The, the starting point, whether you're new or whether you're a leader, you're simply talking at different levels of the organization, but the but the challenge is the same. Um, yeah. And I know that 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 sounds a little bit kind of like okay, a little like abstract, but it's just as abstract as when we have it around the user, right? Yeah. No, I think that's totally. Uh, it, it's totally making sense, and maybe leading leading me to another question related to the direction that the industry as an industry of UX design, mm -hmm. if you want to call that, going. Um, we have been, uh, like you mentioned, we've been called a lot of uh, titles <laughs> from UX right. engineers to UX specialists to UX researchers and designers and UI yeah. and UX designer, product designers. Um, so I think at this moment, where with all what's going on, maybe where do you see our um, industry or UX design specifically going? Um, and maybe what's your prediction about like the the new roles that may may come up mm -hmm. and, and the new opportunities may come up hopefully once the market is back up yeah i think i think the 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 where the shift is happening is happening across the board so that's the good news the bad news and um my prediction is that um and you know 
my predictions are just as good as any, which is not, you know, take yeah. it with a grain of salt. But I, I believe that the merging of roles is mm -hmm. going to be a big thing. And, you know, you have designers that are a little bit more technically minded. Some yeah. have come from, you know, engineering backgrounds. Um, and you have some that are more visually minded and yeah. some that are a little bit more on the business side. Yeah. And so you could you 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 could imagine that you might have a shift of a designer who can, you know, through no code products uh create pretty compelling experiences. Yeah. And so um you know, you're going to have that merge. The same thing with UI engineers who can who've always, you know, been dabbling in design and are shifting in this direction. So then you have the designer who is more on the business side who can you know sink their teeth into the the business uh and through the use of use of ai all these things are going to be able to you know enable someone to sort of power up um uh, on the on the other front the visual designer will have all these tools to take it to the next level yeah i think the the actual craft of design the pixel side of it is going to be commoditized a lot it, you know yeah. in fact it'll become very dynamic uh yeah. you could see this already happening where you 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 see the ability of these sort of templatized views will start yeah. becoming even more and more dynamic we will have our own personalized view they'll happen on the fly you know with with design systems and ui libraries you can now create a ui you know with yeah. ai and that combination it, it's just going to be a really cool interesting time I, I i'm actually pretty excited about that um i know right. that there's i i feel like a shift back to some of the traditional product design hardcore interaction design yeah. um is is something that we can also embrace a little bit it feels like we kind of lost ourselves in figma um and some of the tooling we love our tools you know it's sketch it's figma it's this it's that and and that's yeah. just the craft that's the crafts person in us right we just want to you know go in there and and talk yeah. shop and and that's fine but i think that that we're going to we're going to see a merge of these different roles and yeah. you'll see same way product managers will start dabbling more in design UI engineers will dabble more into design engineers in general. And you just, you're going to have this a little bit more of a mashup, which, which will be interesting to see how this ends up. Yeah, I think that's a, it's a really exciting time and, and it's totally a good point about the tools is it just tools. And I think I've been sharing that with, with, with my yeah. community as well as my team before that, um, that shouldn't change, but the tool shouldn't change the way we're working is, is the that's strategy right. of what we're building um that will keep us going so um yeah i'm excited as well for the future um and i'm excited also that i'm talking to you especially uh we briefly when we chatted last time you talked about also the designer turn entrepreneur or yeah. designer moving a little bit into strategy and business and why there's no design founders um in, mm -hmm. in the tech industry so i'm just curious if, if you can a little bit share with us especially uh that you are yourself now um yeah. basically a founder who is from a design background um yeah. on how that shift is happening and also how you're personally shift from from design leadership or design into um founding an application and a, and a company yeah that's uh I, I that's another part that i think i'm i'm pretty excited about to see more uh founders that come from a design background yeah. And the ability to 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 do this now, especially since you can get pretty far with smaller teams, yeah. AI will become an enabler of this. Um, and for this to happen, um, we have to embrace certain areas that traditionally we haven't really been very involved in or not. I should say we've been involved, but we haven't really led that march and we haven't really embraced it to the full extent. And that's yeah. the business side. Um, the business and the technical side are things that we have to be like put our PM hat on. Yeah. And we, we really do have to start embracing that. And 
in the you know as we're shifting with this economic time it's even more important so this is the thing that i've i've noticed um the ability to just when we say you know we want to see it at the table and all these different terminology it, it really we can't expect them to come to us we have to go to everyone else right this goes back to the empathy we have to be we have to be deeply involved in the business we have to understand the business we have to understand the goals why some decisions are being made on the technical yeah. side we have to understand the limitations we have to understand the constraints all these different types of things so you know what led me to you know to 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 have a shift towards this founder um and an entrepreneur is really you know a challenge out for myself to grow is yeah. the ability that i've seen the different things that um i've needed to do to grow in in my career and how i've needed to kind of expand and you know go into understanding all these different areas that typically weren't considered part of the design process and that's kind of what led to to you know the company that we're that that I'm launching which is Persona X which is really focusing on closing the gap experience yeah. in general if you think about experience it's not the job of the designer yeah. experience is the job of the organization it's ev everything is experience yes so we we tend to think of it as just UX as is oh this is the designer's role um but it's a mistake because you, you know if if you if the performance of the product isn't fast yeah. the ux is broken right um mm -hmm. the support is part of ux the website is part of ux the you know lead generation everything is, is part of ux so understanding the 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 big picture i think is a big is a big part of it and I think we got lost in the pixels for 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 a bit. That's just kind of how I feel. Yeah. Well, no, I appreciate your honesty. I think I think it is true. And um, and if I can add to that as well, maybe that's why we are. I feel there's a little bit of struggle as industry right mm -hmm. now um, of the value of UX because we, you know we we let it be um, always just the value of UI. Um, yes. So hopefully that shift will, will will happen, and I'm happy also that there's more design founders and and um, designers are thinking about design thinking and like you said the experience yeah. of people, um, rather than just one part or mockups or visual UI. Um, I'm just really really excited about Persona X. <laughs> so I actually want to know personally yeah. more about Persona X. So if you can maybe explain what Persona X is and and what it does and um, and how can we also um, like check it out or or see yeah yeah absolutely um, yeah so so the, the uh, basically what what it is in a nutshell is the next evolution of what i believe is personas hmm. um you could call them whatever you know i've heard icps or you know ideal customer profiles and the the people start comparing all these different things at the end of the day you have a customer or a potential customer you have a user they think a certain way it's very difficult uh especially in this market and the climate to uh to map the requirements to to map a a, a journey understand the user's pain points and their needs mm -hmm. um and it's just a constant challenge so what i uh you know what persona x is 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 essentially it's a synthetic personas which uh they're founded on a problem statement or an opportunity statement they're you know the it, so think of it almost like a micro persona in the sense that they're not just broad general personas they have a purpose yeah. and that purpose is very specific to your organization and your business needs so mm -hmm. we tie it to the problem statement the business needs they're they're aware of your organization information they're yeah. aware of the market information sentiment analysis and everything that's happened in the market and they're also aware of the human insights which is the aspects of the personas that which we love which is empathy maps and all these types of things yeah these personas will um another shift in paradigm that i think 
well, will happen and we are um you know trying to um in this particular movement you know put our money where our mouth is is that the personas will follow you so right now it's a very ai is a very uh prompt centric i guess i should have started with that these are synthetic in the sense that they're ai driven um but the idea is that you will be able to instead of just prompt driven experiences the personas are opinionated because they have so much context they're so rich in the context of what you're trying to do and they actually have information that you provide for them that they can follow you and if you're writing a brief if you're writing a requirements document they can actually advise on that it's like having a design partner with you so think of it as virtual design partners that can even join a zoom meeting so yeah. you know you can actually invite your customers to your meetings and you can actually have them also provide uh, suggestions on the discussions that you're having uh so so at the end of the day it's you know it's it's a tool for you to uh you know build and design with your customer instead of just for your customer um now the questions that will come up is well how you know what happens to research yeah well th this is not a replacement for research if anything it's an enhancement and this is where the paradigm shift happens which we you know you create a knowledge loop where you go and you do the research you identify the highest risk items you go do those th that research and that information comes back and feeds back into the persona so the personas should always reflect your research that you do on the field they're not a replacement for field research in fact they're think of them as a way to consume that information in a convenient way and the paradigm shift is that currently tools research tools you have to go to the research and you have to synthesize the information you have to make sense of it and all of that here yeah. the research is coming to you yeah. so it's a very proactive way to consume the information uh and and you know and get the uh, advice based on the context that you do so at the end of the day that's the main thing there is a as to create the personas there is a design thinking sort of you know uh process but it's just that it's a process to collect information and to understand you know you 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 set the business you get your personas you understand the the current pain points and the journey and then yes you can storyboard and you can create a vision of where you want to go uh, and as we know those visions are constantly changing so it's a way to dynamically keep updating that um but that that's that's sort of the the authoring um workflow now how yeah. to how to get access is very early so you have to go uh to persona x.ai and then you know join the wait list uh, we will be inviting people a little by little as we as like you know your usual uh you know try to get a couple of uh, folks get some feedback make some in updates and as we as we see that there's stability uh we'll yeah. start opening up uh the the doors to to more and more folks absolutely so it's persona x.ai so i'm already yep. i think i'm on the list already but i will try <laughs> sure. as well um i think that sounds really fascinating because it's one of the hardest problem that we always faced as designers yeah. and design teams is first conducting the design um, um sorry the ux research uh, interviews yep. themselves and then um synthesizing and taking all the information, analyzing it, that actually took the most of the time. So um, for yeah. your idea and, and your company or your app to actually does a lot of this work using AI, I think it's a really good, it's a good opportunity and a good uh, uh, place to actually help us in research and design yeah. without actually taking over. Um, it's not, uh, I'm, I'm glad you also cleared that up. Like it's not very, uh, it's not just a generating persona out of nowhere. It's, That's it's right. using your own interviews and your own information for yeah. two-level data and also analyzing it with an external data, I believe, as well. Correct. Um, external, yeah, it, exactly. It's external data, it's uh, your field data, and it's your uh, project and your initiative or, you know, um, yeah, yeah, product information. So so the one thing that I should clarify is that this isn't just for designers. This is for entrepreneurs. This is for product managers. I'm going to ask this yeah. question as well. Like, what is your, your target audience or users? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Our, our, so the target audience. So here's a, here's a philosophical 
uh, approach to personas that I have. Our personas tend to be very role centric, and I get it. Like I, I, I do that too. Your mind just goes to a role, yeah. but personas should really be mental model centric. And so, going back to that, to that, yeah, philosophy and approach is the mental model that the product is is uh, targeted towards. Are uh, you know anyone who is making strategic decisions on the product? Yeah, and that could be an entrepreneur, that could be a product manager, that could be a probably a very senior you know design leader. Um, it, it could be a you know VP of product uh, marketing. It could be someone from customer uh, success. Um, so that's the mental model. The mental model is someone who uh, really cares about the experience, really cares about the user, and you know wants to understand and wants to use that actively in the process of whatever decisions they're making. Now, there's a correlation to roles, right? Which I just mentioned, like you know, there's yeah. a product manager and you know. The entrepreneurs and leaders, but my focus when I think of personas are mental models. Now, on the business side is who has the budget and all these things because you have to, you know, product market fit. You have to survive as a business. So yes, there's a conversation around, you know, who would use it that would actually be able to, you know, have uh, access to to saying I need this, I want to pay for it. But that's a kind of a separate uh, conversation. The main thing is this: this is targeting those that care about the experience yeah. and that have a decision making um involvement and so that that's that's kind of who that who this is for which is something that i've learned kind of going back to the topic that you were mentioning about design something that i've learned um that we need to get better on and that would be very helpful it doesn't matter what level you're at yeah is to create a thread that clearly connects the dots between the experience and what the business is trying to do. Yeah. And what, what tends to happen, and this, this was a challenge that I had for many years, which kind of has now evolved into a product, is that yeah. the design thinking process, you know, usually is like a workshop or everyone gets together and, you know, there's whiteboards and post-its everywhere. And it's great and everybody loves it and they come out super pumped. Yeah. But then from the discovery, that process to the delivery, there's a disconnect. Yeah. And you're like, wait, we dreamt this, but we produced this. How? How did that yeah. disconnection happen? Yeah. And one of the main reasons is because we, we're, we're not really good at connecting the dots all the way into the features to say, here's the problem we're solving. Yeah. Here's the job to be done that is tied to that. Here is a pain point that is associated with that. Here is a hypothesis that's associated to that pain point. And here are the features that are connected to that. And here's the way we will know that it's successful, measure of success. That mapping, when you yeah. cleanly just lay it out, it actually ties to the delivery with a measure of success. So what we're trying to champion is that that process without talking too much about process because people kind of shut down when you you know have yeah. that <laughs> you know eat your vitamins or take your vitamins kind of conversation. No, totally. Yeah, I think this is exciting. Um, it has been for a long time this disconnect and and as teams you do try to kind of go around it, so um, it's usually like a pain. So I'm, I'm glad there's a really good like clear pain that you're trying to tackle here and uh yeah. i'm very excited about persona x and i can't wait to actually start using it and review it maybe one of of the videos absolutely the yeah yeah we, we we need all the 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 brutal feedback is the one that we need you know we 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 need that um and it you know i think you I got think it this goes back to the the, the merging right? yeah you get the, the 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 merging of the roles where it's it's both on the technical on the delivery side it's also on the business side you're thinking about the user design is a, a one of many conversations and we need to get better at not just focusing only on the design in fact i did a i, I wrote a just a quick post on a book that i that i was reading in, on linkedin 
which is a kind of a reminder that product design stemmed from engineering mm -hmm. you know it, and so when you think about you know you st start getting into the actual material piece of the design yeah we, we it, that's not the pixels that's that's the pixels and the code put together so in the real world you can't get away with that right because you you if you're building a coffee pot you have to know how the mechanics of the coffee pot to actually design it properly now you can have an aesthetic conversation you want it to make it look really cool and you know slick and you know now yeah. you're going to hide the buttons and all that type of stuff but you can't get away from that in the physical world in the digital world we have we could and so we did uh in right. many ways not yeah. everybody that's not a fair statement but you know in many ways we have separated that conversation of the material and the aesthetic yeah but i think that is a true a true statement like what you just said because it is um easy to make things looks cool and looks nice and looks functional mm -hmm. and modern but then when you start using it it doesn't work in in, in real life use um because that right. you're gonna get stuck in into um a lot of blockers in your in your yeah. experience so um uh, anything else would you like to add before we kind of wrap up? <laughs> like... Yeah, I, I, I think I think one thing that, uh, you know, to just to give something very practical um, and, mm -hmm. you know, to to the design world. Yeah, the information architects uh, of the world are going to do very well. Um, we are moving, you know, in, you know, the, this conversation around prompts um, and this conversation around AI uh yeah. is a very is one where we need to go in and sink our teeth deeply into understanding the intricacies of this and thinking of the prompts as conversations and thinking of that conversational experience yes. is everything right now so kind of going you know really thinking about what problem you're solving first start yeah. with the problem start with who's using it but then start thinking from an experience standpoint, understand what it is, what does prompt engineering mean? How is information flowing? And understand the actual technical aspects. And when I say technical, now they're prompts. So it's not like, you know, yeah. code. The, the prompt is in many ways becoming the code. Yeah. So that I highly suggest designers to be deeply involved in not separate themselves from that user flows information architecture leads to the prompt uh design yeah. let's call it right so in fact the word we're using is you know uh prompt engineering but you prompt could also call it prompt design yeah right? you could call it prompt designing so that piece i think is a survival i mean i'm gonna go as far as that is that the designers should really think about that in terms of how you interact with it and what's happening behind the scenes because at the end of the day what's happening is that the system is becoming more humanoid or whatever you want to call it right so yeah. you so so it's a conversation that the that the human is having with the um with the machine and so it, it in this sense the the experience is very much tied to uh to understanding what's happening behind the scenes on the on the, on the prompt side and how to optimize it how to create context all these types of things make a huge difference to the experience um and what's going to happen is if, if if we don't do that someone's got to do it and whoever does that is actually leading the experience yeah well said. That's that's really awesome. Um, yeah, I remember the days we talked about humanizing design and humanizing the experiences, and I think now we're humanizing the prompts and prompts engineering. So it, it is right. exciting time. Um, so just thank you so much uh, for yeah, your time absolutely. today, and uh, just telling everyone, please go uh, check out PersonaX.ai. Um, also, uh, be prepared and go learn engineering, uh, sorry, prompt engineering. Go check that out as well. Yes. Um, and really appreciate you and I appreciate you giving me the time. Thank and you.
it's always a pleasure to chat and I, I look forward to our next chat probably off the camera thank yeah, you so absolutely. much absolutely all, right, all right thank you thank you